No, what's up boys and girls welcome back to another guide on pvt this time and today we're going to be looking at a double oracle into charge slot guide um, and especially against a three rex opener from the terran so a lot of the time when i post the guide they're kind of ga um, against especially against terran they're against a, a quick factory opener because that's the most common thing and i get a lot of complaints hey a lot of people on my level play three rex openers what am i supposed to do against that so i played a game against clem the other day and it was against three rex and i happened to play this build so i figured i'll i'll have a look at that we take a look at the build order very slowly and then from there on out i will give you some reactions i'll also explain what to do in case it is a factory opener as it's just some very uh some very easy adaptations but to start off of course the 14 pylon 16 gate 17 gas um, the whole build order will be posted down in the description below as well. So if you uh, don't want to listen to my voice, then you can look at that. Um, after, in this in this game, I use a no scout, by the way. It's not necessary to to, to not scout, but it does uh, provide a little bit of uh, extra minerals, which is nice. A little bit of extra minerals, a little bit of extra gas. So you can no scout. Most of the time, I prefer scouting just in case you're getting proxied. But I knew my opponent isn't much of a proxy player, so I decided not to scout against him. Um, 20 Nexus, as always, followed by a 20 Cybernetic score. After the 20 Cybernetic score, we get another probe. We got our 21 Assimilator and our 22 Pylon. Now, usually I'd say you always have to build this Pylon on the low ground. But because you're playing Stargate as a follow-up, you can also build your pylon at the Reaper spot. Because you don't need a wall against Hellions, as you will have Oracles to deal with the Hellions. So, it's just something to keep in mind, is that in this game, I still make the wall, but it's not completely necessary. Alright, like you can build that pylon wherever you want. You can build it here, you can build it here. This is a terrible location, so don't do that. But, for example, to spot the Reaper in this location might be useful to build your second pylon there. Now, the moment our gateway or our cybernetic score finishes, as well as our second pylon, we build an adapt and we start our stargate, obviously before warp gate, as we want to get out that oracle as quickly as possible. Once our adapt has started, um, we get a, or once this finishes, we get a second adapt and then we get our warp gate once money allows. Double chrono is what I like to do. Um, first chrono on the adapt, second chrono on the adapt, and it's adapt into adapt into another adept. Uh, my opponent does open up with double reaper, which is a rather old strategy. I haven't seen this a lot. And it's actually a bit annoying for me because he opened reactor first double reaper. Because I'm not seeing a reaper yet, I think there's not gonna be a single reaper and I send my first unit across the map. Now that I'm gonna have to pay for that kind of dearly when he enters my base with two reapers. I do have one adept in position, but uh, yeah, I, I still rather have two units at home against this, obviously. No. If we continue with the boulder, the moment our Stargate finishes, we want to start an Oracle as soon as possible. Uh, our third adept starts before that. After, um, we can be scouting with this adept, but it's not really necessary. Like I said, most of the time, if there's a Reaper on the map, I like to keep this adept at home, um, just for safety. <clears throat> so we should start our Oracle. We have to pull some probes to deal with these two Reapers, but not that big of a deal. I believe I do end up getting both of them, yes. So first oracle starts, I like to chrono boost this one. And after my first oracle starts, I build a pylon and two extra gateways. Preferably the pylon before the two extra gateways. Otherwise you might accidentally get supply block when you want to build your second oracle. As you can see, almost happens here, or basically happens here. So pylon, gateway, gateway, second oracle. And at that point, we want to get our third base. And usually when my third adept finishes, I send one of my adepts across the map. And this adept basically will be walking the path um, where my oracle will be flying or approximately walking the path that my oracle will be flying. I do this in case if there's any mines on the map, my adept will tank it and my oracle will be able to take out the mine. So uh, most of the time I kind of want to follow my adept with my oracle movement. It's very difficult to check every single little spot for mines. Like you can spot them, but it's very difficult. And also uh, why make it hard for yourself when it can be easy? Just send an adept forward, he can tank it. He's the sacrificial lamp this bad boy is. And if there is an adept or if there's a mine, you tank it with the adept. Oracle comes in and you can scout. Now, the first thing I like to do with the oracle 
is I like to check what my opponent is doing. Sometimes I go into the natural, um, sometimes I go into the main, but at, in this case, I already figured out that it's three Rex as I've scouted it with my adept earlier on, which means I can just try to do some damage. So I shade forward with one or two adepts and I see that there's a turret here. Well, I don't want to go in there with an Oracle. I don't really want to lose any units in general. So I'm, I'm just going to be scouting for now. Now, if in this case, I see that it's a factory with a starport, after my second Oracle, I build one Phoenix. The Phoenix is just so I can chase Medivax away. Uh, and they can just hide here forever with two mines inside and you unable to do anything. So that's the only change I would make uh, if this was a factory opener rather than three racks. But because it is three racks, we won't be doing that. We stay on two oracles. Um, you see we have the third base, extra pylon. These two gates are finishing up. And before we warp anything in, we got our forge, our twilight, and hopefully I get a third gas right now. That's kind of what I would expect, yeah. So a third gas. I warp in a sentry as I have quite some gas at the moment. Um, once again, if you are playing against a factory opener, you probably can't afford that sentry right now if you don't have enough gas because you need to be getting that Phoenix a little bit faster. Now, I know it's three racks, so I'm expecting a push. Usually, if it's not three racks, what you want to be doing is you want to be adding probes and gateways. Against three racks, however, you still want to be adding probes, but you don't want to be adding gateways. Instead, you want to be producing from your gateways. Because you need units earlier on than you do against uh, a factory build. Um, so their double medevac push most likely hits later, but they'll have a push earlier, for example, something like this, either with just stim or just combat shield. Some people go with combat shield and stim. Uh, in this case, my opponent um, will be going with just stim. And what is this? A bunch of marines, 12, 13 marines. So I need a couple of uh, units. Now, usually if your battery finishes around 520, 525, and you have six, seven units, your oracles at home, you should be fine. Uh, in this case, he hits a little earlier, which means my battery isn't done, but it also means he can't be hitting with combat shield and he can't be hitting with a lot of units. So he uh, basically gives up some of the strength of the push to push earlier. And that just means that I don't actually need this battery to finish. I should have used Guardian Shield rather than a Force Field here. This is also why this, the Fast Sentry is so nice. So you can use Guardian Shield. Sadly, for some reason, I decided to Force Field rather than Guardian Shield. With Guardian Shield, this would have been a really easy win. With a useless Force Field, I lose a little bit more. But once the Oracles join up, I'm just going to lose a single Oracle and be completely fine against this. And I'd like you to pay attention right now to the situation in the game is that I'm 46 workers against 38. I have a third base done. I have good saturation everywhere. The only thing I'm really lacking is infrastructure in the sense of I only have three gates, but that's because I've been building units out of them rather than adding more gateways. Now, while this attack was happening, the moment my forge and my twilight finished, I started my plus one armor and I started my charge. Now, usually what I say is that you should um, mainly put chronos on the armor as armor takes longer to build right charges is, is a shorter build time than armor however if you're getting pushed very quickly so except for example if you're afraid that your charge won't finish before he pushes you should put more chrono boost on the charge the armor is more of a lux luxury upgrade it's nice to have but it's not necessary the charge is the opposite of a luxury upgrade. This is more like if you don't have it, you die, which obviously isn't nice. The armor might make one or two zealots more survive. This one makes you survive in general. So because it's faster, you usually don't want to chrono boost it. But if you're afraid, you won't get it before his first big push with two medifacts, with stim, with combat shield, with a couple of mines. Please chrono boost this. It's more important. If you're not sure what to do, Chrono boost this one. If you have enough energy because you're a clown and don't know how to macro, it's chrono boost both. Nothing going on, boys. Nothing going on. So, after you stop their three racks push, what you want to be doing is you want to be adding gateways. You want to be going up to six or eight gateways. Um, you might want to put a small probe cut at 52, 53 in that case. Um, I'm not sure if I do in this game, but. I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing it. So we have a little bit of a probe cut here. 52. No, we don't. Just continue pumping up probes. We add three gateways. One, two, three. And uh, we get a fourth gas as well. This is 
by the way, the forecast is both to afford easier tech into Templar archives or to afford easier tech into the robotics facility. Add a couple of sentries, which are always very, very useful in this kind of army. And because I am, um, I'm kind of confident in my ability to hold stuff. I go to a, a good program, right? Like right now I have 58, which is basically full saturation on three bases, except the gas is on the third. Um, I add two extra gateways. I'm adding a Templar archives. I, I'm idling some probes, which is no problem. Like all of these things are things that a confident man does. You know, I continue my work of production. Getting a fifth gas. It's because I destroyed that first push so hard um, that I feel confident doing that. Now, I like to get a bunch of sentries with this army. And you might be like, hey, why do you want to get sentries? You have charge lots, right? You should always be able to catch them. It's because of how you want to engage as a Protoss into, uh, into a Terran. And that's basically, you want to catch a part of the army with force field and then charge on top of him. Otherwise, you'll just be kited back over Widow Mines. You'll lose all your zealots. So what you want to do is you want to kind of meet him on the map a little, maybe over here. Force field a part of his army, kill that part of the army or make him pick up and then return. You just keep doing that. You never want him to get into a good position. So I hope we're going to get a, a little bit of a taste of that in this game. Maybe I can show you exactly how to do it. You see I'm getting an Archon as well right now with this army. My follow up from this. So what I like to do is I get um, one or two Archons and then transition into either Colossus or Disruptor. Most of the time, initially I like to get Disruptor or you might be very vulnerable against the Ghost Mine Push. Um, but you can also, if you're very safe, you can go straight into Colossus as Colossus are a little bit better in the long run. Now you can see what kind of army I have and I'm just gonna be guarding these ramps a little bit, right? There's no need for me to, to be afraid. As long as I can guard these ramps, there's no way he can walk up. Oh, I'm feeling so confident. I'm just going to be moving out on the map a little bit, apparently. Uh, decide not to. Now, the moment something like this happens, um, when you push back their first push, or well, their first real push with the medevac so convincingly, probably what you should be doing is adding a second forge, going up to six gas, and maybe even getting a third base all at the same time. Because you, I've seen the third base. I know it's there. I know he won't be able to do any damage to me soon. So the only thing I'm really afraid of right now is, for example, a 2-2 timing or a, basically a longer game. So what I want to be doing now is I want to start preparing for that longer game by getting that forge, by getting that forward base, and probably getting a transition into disruptors at this point. Start adding a, a robo bay, maybe a second robotics facility as well as a sixth gas. Yeah, there we go. Doing all those things. It's always great when I follow my own advice. I'm a big fan of that. Second Robo, not yet on the way, but I would suggest a second robotics facility, as well as Blink, of course, starting the moment your second forge finishes, probably want to start your plus one upgrade. Um, I'd always, whenever I open charge, I like to start with plus two armor and then get my attack upgrades after, as those salads, uh, they, they profit so much from armor upgrades that it'd be a waste not to get it, almost. So yeah, second Robo also on the way right now. And from here on out, while I'm building my robotics bay, usually what I like to do is I like to get a prism and just put a couple of zealots in it. Sometimes, if I'm very on top of things, I build a prism and an observer. You need two chrono boosts for that, or a one and a half chrono boost, and then your robo bay will approximately finish. Um, and you just, a very important thing with the prism is to use it whenever your opponent is moving out. So I see the mistake a lot of people make is that they'll go in. As, his, as their opponent is sitting at home. And I mean, I think unless you're a very low level player, most of the time this won't work. Like usually counter attacks work because something is happening on the map. Um, so you, like it should always have a use. Mo most of the time, either the use is to pull your uh, opponent out of position or to force him to go back or to go all in or something like that. So if I would be going in right now into the natural, he'd just stim this little army, kill my salads, and then he'd be like, well, that was cool, but that kind of sucked. So absolutely no use for that so what i want to do is i want to get some map vision so i can see when he's moving out so maybe get some zealots around the map some vision and then uh whenever i see him move out i just go in with my prism and i should be fine so that's exactly what i'm doing i'm getting some some vision on the map continuing into the fourth base and starting disruptor production because i'm afraid of the ghost push here we see our zealot 
does get spotted. My prism doesn't. And now I see something move out on the map. So I wouldn't be surprised if I go in immediately already. No, I decide to wait, which is the wise decision. Now, sometimes what happens, at least for me, is that I'll see my opponent move out and I get so stressed out that I completely forget to send my prism in. Don't be like me in that case. Just try your best. So this would be the perfect opportunity to send my prism in, right? He's in the middle of the map, has nothing at home. And here we go. Actually sending my prism in. I can't believe how well I'm playing this game. Literally following my own plan. That's very rare. So the prism gets in. Uh, if you have money, you can do a big warping in the main base. Boop. There we go. So usually I like to drop into the natural, warp into the main, or drop into the third, warp into the main. Both, in my opinion, are fine. Um, I have a couple of zealots here, which ideally they would have been sent towards his third base at the same time. And then all of a sudden you have a three-pronged attack, which takes almost no effort to set up. Zealots don't really need to be microed. Um, so just focus on your main army, the micro there. So with the disruptor balls, ideally I want to be hitting ghosts and mines. But... My, like most of the time the mine is the safe kill right like they, they can't really move once they're burrowed so if you know there's mines try to kill them before that happens with a disruptor ball um, and these disruptors are just to help me stay alive basically like I, I, I don't actually want disruptors that much I much prefer having colossus in my army so as you can see now is that I killed about 25 workers with that drop and he's on 49 workers against 75 which means this is extremely all in and this happens a lot is when they will be attacking you and you move in with a prism is that all you need to do is survive and that's once again why these disruptors are so useful very good against mine very good against ghost good against marauders as well especially if your opponent doesn't have the most brilliant micro um we continue upgrades and now that we've beaten this push and we feel relatively safe we can start adding gases onto our fourth base perhaps we can start our colossus range and we can start going into colossus there we go continue our upgrades of course finally sending in that zealot run by and once again we're just trying to stay alive with this disruptors it's all we really care about now sometimes when people get a siege position like this you can start feeling extremely stressed. I, I have it a lot. Sometimes it's siege tanks. Sometimes it's uh, six, seven liberators. The correct play when you identify that there is a siege that you probably won't be able to break is to immediately expand in the opposite direction. So right now I should be taking this base and I should be pretending to want to be keeping this base. I don't want to keep this. Well, ideally I want to keep this base, but I don't think I can break this siege anymore. This is a very difficult siege. So what I should be doing is I should be aiming for cost-effective trade so picking off a couple of uh, marauders here and there with a disruptor shot uh, maybe picking off one liberator if i can but i only have six seven stalkers i'll never be able to to blink in and kill this so it's better to not save this base take this base and for example do something like this this is brilliant man i i was playing really well this game this counter attack is really smart i send all my zealots away he can just move into my army like he, he the main damage of his army is into siege units, which can't really shoot at these. So I don't actually need my zealots. So I just send them to counterattack. I basically force him into an all-in. And if I would have this base right now, that would be absolutely fantastic. Sadly, I don't. But just the fact that I realize I can't be attacking into this is pretty good already. Like, it, it, it's kind of difficult to give up a base like that. As you know, It feels like it's basically a game ender. But a lot of the time you can just expand somewhere else. As long as you don't lose the probes. That's completely fine. So at this point some of my Colossus should be coming out. And uh, once you hit one or two disruptor shots. Like he's slowly but surely bleeding units. You know I have five, six disruptors. I can continuously send balls his way. And I think in a second or two I can just blink in and basically kill him. And he's very, very afraid of that as well. My salad run by, by the way, killed about 14, 15 workers. So really putting him in a, a big all-in position. I re-expand. I really should have expanded here. He scans there as he expected the re-expand there. And then once I find a good fight here, um, like eventually you're going to find an angle on these liberators. Especially if you're doing counter-attacks at the same time. And he's just going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, at this point, um, he hasn't been upgrading at all. He has no eco. I'm, I have so much money. Um, I, right now we have similar income, but I have 30 more workers. I'm up 40 supply and my army is basically better. So all I really need to do at this point is just kind of finish the game. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to walk straight over him and 
that's basically it. It's the two Oracle into the charge lot armor into one or two Archons into disruptors to deal with a ghost mind push. That's basically it. All right. If there's any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. If you have any suggestions for other guides you want, uh, also put them in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy these videos, it helps me out greatly. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time and bye bye.